So, where do we start? Well, we're going to begin at the beginning with HVAC fundamentals, which is really its own standalone skill. But here we're going to talk about it in the context of a prerequisite to be able to talk sensibly about the RCX process. So with RCXU, we're not going to get into everything you would need to know to be a designer of HVAC systems, but we are going to cover some basics. So to be able to talk really with any value about, say, optimizing a chiller, we're going to need to know a little bit about the loads that chiller sees, um, something about how that chiller is put together, um, what the pumping system looks like that runs the chill water back and forth, the chill water coil that interacts with the air, and then how the HVAC controls really ties the whole shoot and match together. So we're going to start with HVAC loads and processes, which is really, for commercial buildings, one of the main purposes of HVAC in general is just to address loads in the building with the introduction of some HVAC process. So some definition. When we talk about an HVAC load, we're talking about some quantity of, of heat that needs to be addressed, i.e. added or removed, through an HVAC process to keep the space uh, comfortable. So there's really two flavors of HVAC loads. We can talk about sensible loads, which is dry heat, or the heat that, for the most part, is what you're going to feel with your skin. And that can come from internal gains with things like lights, especially the less efficient those lights are, the more heat those lights are going to give off. Solar gain, so if you have a lot of south-facing windows where sunshine is getting in and heating up something in the space, that's going to create heat that needs to be addressed. And similar for electrical equipment, which may be trivial for something, say, a pencil sharpener, or non-trivial for something such as a data center. There's also window conduction, so depending on the how many panes you have in a window or the U-value of that window, you're going to have a heat going in one direction or another on the heat, so it could be a positive or negative sensible load. Same thing with wall conduction based on the insulation of that wall assembly or its R-value. You're going to have some sensible load to address. And with uh, cold air or hot dry air outside, as it's coming in as in ventilation or air purposely brought in, or infiltration, air sneaking in, that's going to be something that gets addressed with your HVAC system. There's also latent loads, is the other type of HVAC load, and that's the, the wet heat or the moisture in the air. So if you think about standing next to a pool or a fountain in some building, you can probably imagine what it feels like to have that moisture in the space that needs to be addressed. But more typically, we're going to see loads that have a combination of a sensible and a latent component. So think of people. People sweat, and there's also a little bit of moisture as you breathe, but also people are heat engines, and we give off sensible heat that if you had a lot of them in a room, that's a sensible and latent load that needs to be addressed. Very similar for cooking equipment, and then as you get into hot and humid climates, the ventilation and infiltration will have both of those components to be addressed. So the HVAC process really is just then the, the movement of that heat energy in order to address these loads and accomplish a change from a state where you don't want to be to some comfortable or design or mission operating condition. A few caveats. So we use the term movement to be in line with the first law of thermodynamics that tells us that we can't create or destroy this heat energy. We can just move it from a place where we really don't want it inside the space to a place where we're less concerned about it, say, outside. And also acknowledging that, per the second law of thermodynamics, this is going to take some work to accomplish. A more simplistic way of thinking about this is that if you're in a rowboat and you have water coming in, you're going to want to take a bucket and chuck that water out. Well, in that case, the water is the load, and the process is the bucket and the act of hurling that water out of the boat. Now we're using terms right now about more moist, less moist, uh, warmer, cooler air, but when we talk about looking at air for the purposes of, of RCX, we're going to use the more industry common terms of humidifying, dehumidifying, sensible heating, cooling, and then the various combinations. And this really is governed by the field of psychrometrics, which looks at things like the properties of air. And the equations in that field can be quite complex, but luckily we have a tool called the psychrometric chart or psych chart that is a graphical representation of those relationships. And this is really going to be the primary tool that we're going to use to quickly assess an HVAC system 
that is looking at loads associated with the error. So in the next video, we're going to look at how that chart is constructed, what the labels are and what they mean, and then getting into how to plot states on the psych chart so we can start using it in order to get some numbers and uh, make some assessments.